All right, so what is data standardization and why is it so important? To answer that question, it's best to kind of consider the industry as it is without data standardization. And to do this, to, to illustrate some points, we're going to imagine four archaeology companies. Each one of these companies, each one of them is producing data in completely different formats. Company A is exporting all of their site data as well as on paper in, in uh, LibreArch files. Company B is typing theirs up on, on Word and Excel. Company C's archaeological findings are all put into read-only PDFs, and their surveying data is saved as SVG files. And company D, of course, prefers CAD files. <laughs> now, all four of these companies are doing the exact same job with the, completely the same purpose. But when they're sharing their results, these different data formats mean it's a little bit like they're speaking different languages. And, and this is where we're at without data standardization. It's difficult to do anything with one another's results unless we translate them all into the same output format and standardize the data. And when this data is standardized, it brings a lot of significant advantages to each company. The first and most obvious of these is collaboration. With large infrastructure projects like HS2, collaboration is, is important. You need a lot of archaeologists, and sometimes one company can't provide all of them. And if you've got data standardization between the two companies working together, then they can easily share the data as they're recording it and also easily share it with the clients and other interested third parties. Standardization also benefits communication between all of us. Um, everyone here will have been working in a company where you've been doing an open area site and you've inherited that from a different company who was doing the, uh, the trenching evaluation. And if that trenching evaluation, if all the data from that was put in a in the same format that you use in your own company, it would make everything that much easier to get started quicker and to make sure you're not digging in the wrong place. And I know that last bit sounds a bit silly, but a friend of mine who's a supervisor once spent several weeks on an open area site, and it was a Roman sign, not really finding many finds until they got a really significant small find at the bottom of a Roman pit, uh, which was a 2008 prescription bottle. Um, and that point was when they realized that actually there had been archaeologically excavated um, in exactly the same area before by a different company. Now, if there was standardized data and it was easily accessible, these kind of time vampires just, just wouldn't happen to us. So it can really benefit communication. And lastly, reinterpretation. Uh, we've talked a lot about archiving. And really, the, the whole point of archiving is so that future archaeologists and researchers can continue the work we've done and build upon it or add future insights to it to, to, to learn more from it. But it's actually, in reality, it's quite, it's quite difficult for that to happen. If, if a lot of our data is on paper and it's in LibreArch files, well, you think about how many context sheets there are on a site, for example. That's a lot of raw data and a lot of paper that no one realistically is going to flick through. If this data is saved digitally, it's, it's better. But if it's not standardized, it's still difficult to import into your own working practices and, and get going again. But if we can have data standardization, and I'm going to be saying those two words a lot today if I haven't already. If we had data standardization, it would allow us to more seamlessly progress the work of others and, and push our research further. There's also the issue of our unity as an industry. Now, without data standardization, we, we're all speaking in different languages, and each one of us has our own small voice, and we're talking over each other trying to lobby the government on key issues that affect everybody, uh, or getting the public to sit up and take notice, it is pretty difficult. But if we standardize our data, then boom. Our findings gain greater significance, and we can speak together with one loud voice on issues that affect all of us. This gets people to listen, and this is how change happens. And by the way, standardizing data, it doesn't just create a big speech bubble. It creates big data. Now, what is big data? Essentially, it's when quantities of data are lumped together in, into groups that are so big that normal human beings, we, we can't really make sense of it. It's just too much. Um, but if all this data is standardized uh, as big data, then we can use software to spot the trends uh, that are revealed throughout. There's, there's trends, there's patterns, all kinds of things we can't see if we're trying to flick through context sheets. So big data is extremely important for our understanding of archaeology. And it's also the evidence we use to justify our industry-wide needs and discoveries. And speaking of discoveries, big data can help us better identify and track large-scale archaeological phenomena uh, and also trends, such as changing environmental circumstances, population migrations, the growth and flow of trade, and the evolution of technologies and fashions. In fact, 
There's so much more that we have yet to learn or even know we need to learn because we haven't got the big data there available and it's not standardized. So there are loads of reasons why we'd all benefit from data standardization. But if the benefits are really that obvious, why, why hasn't it happened yet for archaeology? Well, actually, there have been plenty of moments where we have been standardizing our outputs. But it tends to look like this. We continue recording using the systems that we always have done. And then we all export our stuff in our preferred formats. And then once the job's finished, the client or interested parties come back and say, right, can you standardize that, please? So we go back and we spend time and we standardize it. And then it happens again and again and again. It's complicated. It's laborious. It's repetitive. And, and, and basically, it's by retroactively standardizing our output, it, it's like we're playing a giant game of whack-a-mole, right? Except every, every whack takes several weeks and can cost up to a few thousand pounds. Understandably, that is a game nobody wants to play. There is a better alternative and an easier alternative <clears throat> to standardizing the output every time. Though. And that's standardizing the input. If everybody was to be using a unified, standardized digital recording system, then the output just takes care of itself every single time. Seems simple, but as we learned, uh, it really, really isn't. Um, there are lots of complex reasons why archaeology hasn't had one of these yet. And that's a whole other presentation. So we're really just going to look at a couple of the main ones. And the first is that the kind of software companies that could develop something really powerful for us, they're just not interested. And, and you actually, it sounds harsh, but you can't blame them. Right? Archaeology is seen as a comparatively uh, small and heavily fragmented industry. Also, our needs are incredibly subject specific and complex. And they're almost impenetrable to, to an outsider unless you have to speak for a long time. And even then, they'll say, okay, how long will it take us? You know, what, what's the market cost? What's the benefit? Um, this is why big companies aren't really going to make something for us. But we all kind of know that, uh, which is why we've been seeing something pretty exciting over the last five years. And that's that some of the bigger archaeological units have been developing solutions. Now, as someone who loves archaeology and is a massive nerd and loves tech, this has been so cool to see. Um, I've been looking at all the different CIFA presentations. Every time someone shares about their, their recording system, we're glued to it. We plug it into the TV, watch on a big screen. Um, and it's fantastic uh, what these companies have been doing. And they've really been pioneering and leading the way for everyone else. I really believe that a, a rising tide lifts all boats or something to that effect. Um, and, and basically, by, by these companies pushing digital recording, it's got everybody to turn and look at the benefits of it. Because it really is the future of our industry. So that should absolutely be applauded. But there are issues with some of the things that we've been developing. Now, big sweeping statements here, so don't worry. But some of the, some of the software that we're using uh, to make these solutions that wasn't designed for archaeology at all. In fact, most of it is, is office-based software. And this comes with intrinsic limitations. Uh, it has challenges in terms of complexity, connectivity, and compatibility. And again, that's another presentation. But, but the limitation of this software is, is one of the problems with it being ubiquitous, becoming ubiquitous, one, sort of one hurdle there. And another issue is, is commercial archaeology itself. Commercialization allows companies as individuals to experiment and innovate. But if an individual company was to develop a digital recording system that gives a significant competitive advantage, for example, if it makes uh, our workflow a, a lot faster and saves a lot of time, and make no mistake, a good digital recording system absolutely does that, well, then there's no incentive to share that. Because as companies in archaeology, everybody survives by the work that they win tenders for. So sharing this kind of innovation with competitors doesn't, doesn't make any business sense. Um, Again, there are cases where this is happening anyway, and it's brilliant. So, so these are two of the bigger problems as well. So what's the solution to each of these? Well, in terms of office software being reappropriated and its limitations, the solution to that is to code something from the ground up specifically for archaeology. And with regards to the uh, competition issues, it, it needs to be done by someone independently. Well, the perfect people to do that are big tech companies. And unfortunately, they're not interested in archaeology. And this cycle perpetuates. And this is something that I, I think is responsible for why archaeology as an industry isn't as uh, technologically specific as others. Um, we use lots of great technology, you know, drones, SFM, but we don't have any of our own stuff. And I think that loop is part of the reason why. <clears throat>